Welcome back to Good Moms, Bad Choices. I'm Erica. And I'm Mila. And it's Wednesday, bitches. Happy motherfucking hump day. Happy hump day. Have you humped lately? I have. Oh, I'm jealous. Um, yeah, I, I humped lately. <laughs> I'm not going to blast anyone, but <laughs> I've, I've done some humping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am proud to say that we did go to a, a sex play party this weekend, and I did no humping at the play party, and I felt really sexy about it. I, I just that. did a lot of slow dancing, so I'm sure the people I slow danced were, with were like, bitch, but I felt really good about it. Did you? <laughs> I did. I was watching you. Yeah, you got mad at me. I walked in front of her slow dancing moment, and she was like, bitch, what are you doing? And I'm like, like, this oh, is sorry. my song, and I'm looking at myself. Can you have a seat? <laughs> Thanks. And you did. You listened. I did. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> Friends that go to play parties together, stay together. Amen. Um, anyway, we're in New York because we're some New York visiting ass bitches and we can't sit the fuck down and we have a, <laughs> Mad honest. <laughs> it's true. We get our life in New York. We act like we don't we have, come alive. we come alive. We don't have any kids. I'm, we don't have any responsibilities. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out what a play party is. So, I mean, you don't want to play parties? No, my virgin ears. Okay. Well, um, we have a very vanilla guest today. Yep. Very square vanilla yep. man. Yep. You may recognize his voice. <laughs> a very square vanilla man. He is uh, the Messiah of Black Podcast. The Messiah. Wow. I just made that up. Do you like that? <laughs> Too religious? Okay. He is. <laughs> he is the man of the Black Podcast movement. <laughs> uh, I'm one of the many people contributing to the Black Podcast movement. Yes, a prominent leader leader in the podcast community, specifically for black people. Thank you. She Googled that shit. I did it. I made it up. Okay. I'm a fucking word, word Smith. Smith. Thank you. Um, we have, you know, are you a rapper anymore? No, not a rapper anymore. No, no I am not. <laughs> Although I did enjoy your raps. Thank you. Former. Former, former rapper. Former rapper. Hired. For sure. For sure. Uh, former rapper Joe Budden. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show, Joe. Thank you for having me. We've been stalking you for a very long time. Have you been? Mm, a little bit. I'm sure there's like previous DMs in there you never checked. I don't really check DMs like that. Good. Well, we've been stalking you. If you guys don't know, that's how we get most of our guests. We pull up in the DMs. Sometimes we'll send like a sexy picture if we think it's going to matter. That's how, that's worked before. <laughs> Wait, us. really? Yeah. Yeah, Van Lathan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, shout out to shout Van out. Shout out to Van Lathan. Is, Van is, 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 is that how it worked? Yeah. <laughs> With Van? <laughs> we literally were like, send a sexy picture. And he was like, hey, what time? I was like, wow, that's asking you shall fucking receive. Show a little titty and. Well, I don't think and, we showed tits at all. No, it was just some cleavage. We were in lingerie. Oh, that's true. So, how did you, how did, what was the plan for me? Because I didn't get a picture. Well, I guess we, we didn't want to. We don't want to rub you the wrong way. We're so. respectable now. <laughs> that was three years ago. We were a little more got desperate. It, got it, got it. Now we're classier. We've grown up. We're 33 years old. Okay. So we just asked a friend to stalk you for us. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Problem. Yes, Thank you for man. making this happen. Yes, we love Problem. Oh, actually, we were talking about stalking before we hit record and that, you know, we can't put stalkers in a box because apparently I'm, I, he, I told Joe I don't stalk people and he said, mm, and I was like, no, I don't pull up to people's houses. And, and, and apparently Joe thinks I look like a stalker because I said, what part of New Jersey do you live in? And he said, I'm not telling you. I said, I'm not going to stalk you. And he's I, like, I don't know that. that. See, that's what's wrong with people. Look how casually she just said, hey, where do you I, live just in case I stalk? Do like, I have a stalker face to you? No, but I mean, better <laughs> safe than sorry. I just asked the general vicinity. I didn't really ask nah, her to fucking address in your social. No, nah, <laughs> some questions today that I'm, we plan right now, but that's one of them. The whole are you vaccinated thing, that's another one. It could get, it could get sticky quickly. Uh, there's just some questions today that it could get sticky fast. That's true. And I mean, I'm not asking you. Cases, What's your status? And I have real live stalkers, so... I believe you. I believe you. You're kind of cute. You're pretty sexy. So I can understand how you can accumulate. You're a public figure. You're cute. You have a deep voice. Uh, bitches might go a little crazy. Actually, Joe's like totally your type. You have He is my he type. He has light, he's light skin. He has a beard. Are you oh, that's cute. You guys know each other's types. We're wives. <laughs> Platonic wives. Okay. We know everything about each other. I know what her pussy looks like. We go to play parties together. Oh, shit. I didn't do my disclaimer. Anything said here is for entertain entertainment purposes only. Same. Yeah. Like he said. <clears throat> All for entertainment. I don't mean it. I don't mean it either. I just said it. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> oh my god, he really doesn't know what my pussy looks like. I don't. I've never she seen it. Knows what your pussy looks like. <laughs> not not like that. Not because I've like yeah, eaten it. Okay, no. No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't start. See, now everyone's gonna think we fucked, and everyone already thinks we. Fucked. Everybody thinks and we, we fucked. Don't. We, we don't. don't. Fuck. We no, don't. No, you fucked. No, we no, don't. don't. And that's that's on one me. night you wanted to, and one of you had to say, "Oh no, we're friends." No, we've we've heavily we've heavily made out on a drunken night. That's because we love each other so much. But they had nothing. Oh great, who's the better kisser? Oh, we can't. We're kissing each other. Both pretty good kissers. Yeah. Oh, y'all Nobody scared. Lips, right. Forget it then. There's always a better kisser out there too. Somebody has to be the better kisser. Well, we're equal. We're equally Fine. great. I, I won't be divisive. <laughs> Do you want to find out? <laughs> I, I'm, <laughs> I'm the queen no? of three-way kisses. No. <laughs> That's the only thing I did at the play party. I was in the smoking room and I was like, no one said anything. And I was like, has anyone ever tried a three-way kiss? They were like, no, everyone was like, no. And then like three minutes went by and I was like, was anyone like to try? <laughs> <laughs> and two gracious women came together and like, we did a beautiful, like very sensual three-way kiss and that was as freaky as I got, but I felt like I contributed. Can you tell Joe what a play party is? Um, a play party is a party where anything can happen. You're free to play with whoever you came with or others in a sexual manner. There were some toys there. There are condoms available, a lot of sanitary wipes. Uh, it's just a free party to... Or not play. Or not play. You could voyeur. You could, you know, it's... If you're into watching people possibly have sex, then... Or you just want to smoke a, a blunt over there, it's, it's fine. Okay. Okay. Sounds like the swingers party. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Have you been to one? Yeah, come on. What are you talking about? Not me. <laughs> Did you participate? It's my, my bag. Did you participate? No. Well, you don't know what a play party is? We never called it a play party. You, so you, ne but you never participated? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just your voyeur? Would you say your voyeur? I'm, I'm all of it, but I was voyeuring that night. Mm, all of it, okay. That night I was voyeuring, yeah. Erica's smart. She brings her people to the play party, and I feel like that's like an ideal situation. I bring my people to the play party and still don't participate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to watch y'all do this wild shit. Ooh, y'all are freaky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's freaky. I'm going to take that. I'm going to try that. <laughs> Maybe. Um, there was definitely some freaky shit happening. There was some fire play. I was telling you. Oh, man. Next time you guys go to a play party, I want to go. Okay. Well, invite. we'll bring you as long as you take us to the strip club. Oh, definitely. Easy. <laughs> okay. Perfect. You guys heard it here first. If he tries to front on us and not take us. They all know that. I'll bring you to the street. <laughs> they're like, I don't think yeah, there's, yeah, no secret you don't there. have to beg. I think that you're going to really enjoy it. We know how to turn the party up. We've been called the party starters of our day. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Of mm -hmm. our day? <laughs> Is that what we've been called? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay. Well. <laughs> Wait, what was the day? <laughs> what day? Is this yeah. specifically the day that the, we're there? The, yeah, the okay. day, whatever day we show up is the day. <laughs> so what do y'all do to get the party started? Well, I am a, a world-class, top-notch, sexy dancer, which really encourages other people to start sexy dancing. It gets the party flowing. Okay. So um, I take responsibility for that contribution. I'm really friendly also, so people feel like they can come dance with me, and mm. so usually that's the, that's the ice tipper. And you? I think I do sexy dancing too. I think that I get people drunk and. Um, oh, you guys are just a bad combination. You guys are like venom, moms, venom and carnage. Hello, Joe. You know where you're at, right? Jesus. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, you never have to worry about inviting us to the party. We'll we'll be fine. Just go do your thing. We'll figure it out. <laughs> We're the best part guests I mean, you could ever have. You know when you go to a party, you got to babysit a bitch or a nigga like. It's the worst. Like, oh my it's god. The worst. In fact, are you, you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you you okay? might leave us at the party. Like I'm good. <laughs> I'll be good here. I'll see you later. <laughs> I've met some friends. Wow, and we're getting together to do a pod. <laughs> Whoa. Um, Joe, no hard feelings. Can Fine. you share an affirmation with our with our audience? I know that you said you are your whole life is an affirmation. Yeah, my whole life is an affirmation. It's affirmation all over. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me Inspire see. the people. Um. Oh, here's an affirmation. Uh, one time I was going to kill myself, and then my pastor called right in the middle of it. Okay. I don't know if that's an affirmation. <laughs> I don't even want to laugh, but what the fuck? Right, that's definitely I mean, an affirmation. That's how, a sign. How's that? Sure. That's an affirmation. Okay, okay. I was just, you know, more... Usually, something. like, we, like, repeat it out loud. One day I was going to kill myself. myself and then my, one day I was going to kill, kill myself, myself, and then, and then, then my, my pastor, pastor called me right before I did it. I'm going to translate that. Yeah, that was crazy to me. Like, yes. wow, I was just going to do this. How the fuck did you know that from all the way over there? Like, what are you trying to... What is the universe telling me right now? Fine. That your life has purpose. I will live. You have your life. I will has purpose. live another day. I will find meaning. 
in he, this. He felt you. And finding meaning in that meant finding meaning in other things. Like, that's where the affirmation comes from. Too many times in my life, God has just showed me that he's prevalent and real in times of doubt, in times of, they put a gun in my head and pulled the trigger. It didn't go off. It jammed. What the fuck? The cops found the gun and said, hey, they thought that I was lying because the gun wasn't even a hood gun. We was in Jersey City at the time. It was like, these hood project niggas ain't getting this type of gun. This kid's lying. That's what, the, what they thought at first. Then they found the gun. They said, oh, my God, this gun never jams. Well, yeah, but God is real. Mm. So you don't get to tell me what that gun does. So you talk about affirmation. Like, I can just go up and down my life with different areas where basically God is always present in your life no matter what yeah but he he's in fat he emphatically makes his presence known like for the people that don't there are people out there I have atheist friends <laughs> the way you just said that <laughs> atheist friends like I do there are people out there that like talk faith but you could tell it ain't really it ain't really faith like in my life, I don't even get how that could be true. Like, any time there's ever been any of that, God has just came down and put his foot down for me. Amen. Amen. We talk a lot about men. I didn't mean to take you out of church. No, take us to church, baby. Especially after play parties. No, let's go back to play parties. God made sex. We we celebrate here. That's true. That's true. (laughs) We celebrate the pleasure and and the presence of God. This is all divine (laughs) alignment. All of it is divine and pleasurable, you know. Oh, you sound like a talker during sex. I'm not, but I do enjoy a dirty mouth. I don't really want to talk. I'm not going to do a lot of talking, but I would like. You don't do a lot of talking? No, I mean, I do a lot of moaning. I think I'm loud, but I would prefer someone to talk dirty to me. Don't expect me to reciprocate like dirty. Like, I'm not that good at that, but I do want you to have a be good at your dirty talking. Mm. Oh, okay. She is a talker, though. In general, in life. (laughs) I'm learning. I'm learning as I go. (laughs) As are you, I'm sure. Uh, Yeah, no. Yeah, no, you got to unlock that part. I'm working on that part. Like, sometimes I need to shut the fuck up. Wait, can I just say something that I just have to say? Because before I met you, I was already like, damn, this nigga talks a lot. Because (laughs) I joined Clubhouse, and then I saw, I got fucking notifications every goddamn 20 minutes that you were signed into Clubhouse. And I was like... She literally told me, she's like... I was like, like, how can he talk so much? He has so... He already talks for a living, and then he's talking in Clubhouse. How... Can you talk so much? She literally told me, I think Joe must own some of Clubhouse because he's on there all the time. I said, I have seen a lot of notifications with Joe talking. I, I have seen it. But we ain't talking about nothing. <laughs> and you still, you still, See, you still open the app. And, and, that, and that's why Clubhouse is like, it could be therapeutic in that way. That's the only place where I could go and not talk about nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. True, true. I mean, podcasting is therapeutic for me. When, and when I don't like podcasts, I feel sad. I, we, we do batch recordings and I'm like, bitch, we need to get back on the mic. I have some things I have to say. Um, but this is, this space has been like therapy for me. Um, aside from actual therapy. Therapy. Yeah. Um, do we have a card we want to pull, Joe? We are witches in case you didn't know. In case problem didn't tell you. We believe in God. I love you guys. We're, we're God fearing witches. <laughs> Okay. okay, so today we're going to pull a card. Today's card was the star. Uh, the star card shows a naked woman kneeling at the edge of a small pool. She holds she holds two containers of water, one in her left hand, the subconscious, and one in her right, the conscious. She pours the water out to nourish the earth and to continue the cycle of fertility, represented by the lush greenery around her. Now, this card means, as the star follows the tower card in the tarot, it comes as a welcome reprieve after a period of destruction and turmoil. You have endured many challenges and stripped yourself bare of any limiting beliefs that have previously held you back. You're releasing your core essence, who you are beneath all the layers, no matter what life throws your way. Wow, is this accurate? You know that you are always connected to the divine and pure loving energy. You hold a new sense of self and a new appreciation for the core of your being. The star brings renewed hope and faith and a sense that you are truly blessed by the universe. Joe, this card is for you. (laughs) Just affirming what you already told us. Doesn't matter what kind of situation you get in, you come out because you're supposed to be here. Period. Period. (laughs) Period. That was beautiful. Beautifully read. Beautifully said. be speaking, man. I agree. They be coming through. You fucking right, they do. (laughs) I do. Um, we're witches, but we believe in like manifesting and we've manifested some shit, you know, like just speaking things. And then like five minutes later, an hour later, getting a call or an email. I'm like, oh, I'm a fucking witch. (laughs) 
pretty lucky. Doesn't that feel good when that happens? It means you're aligned with the universe. Like the decisions you're making are actually supposed to be happening and you're in the right path. Mm -hmm. I agree. Do you, I mean, like we all talk a lot of shit all day. We were talking before we started. A lot of our lives are on the internet and which is not a popular thing. Like, I think it's pretty popular. No, it's mad popular. Uh, okay. Everybody's popular. life is on the okay. life is on internet. Now. That's true. <laughs> okay, well, we are a part of the very few that get paid for it. <laughs> so I have a reason to tell all thousands of people my business. How about you? Um, but like, do you feel like you've manifested this? Like, in what ways? Like, as a child, did you see yourself telling all your business on the internet for a living? Mm, no, no, I didn't see that as a child. <laughs> If we start from back there, I had the boring dream of being a lawyer or a doctor or whatever they tell you at that age is cool, but how the fuck do you know? Right. I like to argue, so I probably would have been a pretty cool lawyer. But all the years of schooling, nah, it wasn't for me. wasn't for me. When I started rap, I never... It wasn't until I did High 97's morning show that I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do when I finish rapping. Mm. Oh, really? Oh, 100%. It was without a doubt. Then you're like, I kind of like this. I was a new rapper. So I was a I was a new rapper in 2001, right? So that means that my job was to make music and not be paid. That's what new rapping looked like if you just got a record deal in 2001. Two years later, I got a radio gig on the top top radio station in the city and I was paid well consistently and I was like oh and I was just talking talking shit granted I had to learn the talk breaks and the first 15 minutes over here and the TSL over here and the board and the you and to get you involved and I had to, it was like boot camp it was like boot camp then but uh when I did that I was like oh whenever I stop rapping this is what it is now this just wasn't podcasting. So my picture of that was, oh, okay, I'll end up on 97 or BLS or 105 Sports Talk, some radio somewhere, right? But it would only have to be, it would have to be a major city though because I'm vulgar and I'm me and you're going to pay me for real. So you ain't going to put me in Milwaukee, no, no disrespect to them. <laughs> no, I feel you. I Major cities. Um, what? Uh, fuck. I got. I, I. I got high before you guys. It's fine. I told you. It's to fine. Going. You think about what you're saying. I'll, I'll <laughs> keep like, going. Wait. What, I only hit it two times. God, why are you making me dumb? So later on, <laughs> like right, like as the rap career started to dwindle down for me anyway, as I wanted to start trying to pivot and transition. Those, those seats. The New York radio A mic seats weren't leaving. They weren't right. leaving. Angie went from here to here. Flex is here. Charlamagne is here. But you get got to see him get there at least. Ebro was here. Like the seats weren't leaving. So it was like, oh fuck. Now what does this look like? How long have you had your podcast? Shit. What are we going on? Seven years? Wow. We're going on seven years. We started in 2015. But in 2010, 2011, I was hit and record, talking for an hour and uploading it to iTunes oh. and calling it, I think the name of it was, This Is My Fucking Show. <laughs> and it was just practice. It was practice. It was, it was you just got to be able to talk, even if it's by yourself. I used to go to Vegas and Atlanta and just go places and just talk to everyone the big girls the little girls the tall girls the kids the senior citizens the person at the register girlfriends would be mad at me yo you speak to everybody you speak to the bank bitch oh my god that's, it's that's me. what they would say not me <laughs> not me you speak to the bank bitch the supermarket bitch the bitch at the car wash like nigga why are you so accessible to everybody and it's like how do you try to explain? No, baby, I'm I'm owning I'm honing my my craft. Yeah, right. It ain't it ain't what it looked like. But so it's just been years. It's been years of that. And today, this is the culmination of that. What's going on in the market? This is the culmination of that. All these different podcasters getting paid. All of these niggas with a fucking podcast. You want me to tell you what happened in 2015 with podcast? They laughed at me. 
Mm. Big Joe. Big time Joe. Uh, podcast. Uh, yeah. Podcast. I mean, maybe you don't see it, but I do. And now look, so it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Blessed. Grateful. I love it too. I can't wait for the next nigga to tell me I'm too friendly. And I'm like, this is who I am and this is my job. The gig so is the gig. I'm going to talk to everybody. Yeah, I, I talk. <laughs> yeah, you got to hone your craft. You got to research. I think even us, like, I mean, we started our podcast low key by accident. Like, it wasn't with intention how some people start podcasts where it's like super planned out and they have. We wrote an outline. Set segments and all those things. Like, us was just like, I'm lonely, bitch. We had a photo shoot and then we're like, talk. <laughs> this like, is, most importantly, have a photo shoot, second push record. I'm a single mom. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm dating, but also what is happening? I can't be the only person out here feeling this way. I'm also black, and there's no black single moms talking real shit on pod in the podcast mm -hmm. space. I was like, well, I might as well just I just might as well just hit up my homegirl and talk our talk shit. shit. Talk our shit. And yeah. then look, three years later, people are like, wow, I can't believe that you guys exist. And now I'm now I'm addicted. Now I can never shut the fuck up. It's true. <laughs> now I'm like, like, are you ever going to shut the fuck up? No. When I leave the space for too long, I miss my voice in the space. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I feel that. If, if that you... was some real narcissistic sounding shit. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> have you been called a narcissist? By people that don't know me. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's like a, a word that gets thrown around a lot, especially for men. Like the narcissist word is like. Yeah, you got people just using the word and have no idea what it really means. What do you think a narcissist is defined by? Oh, I don't go by what I think. I go by the context of the English language. So, <laughs> so what is it? I'll, I'll tell you right now. Go, okay. Well, I, that's it. And, that's, and that be my point. We never have to go off what we think. This stays on page one for me, dictionary.com. Oh, 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 look, you looked up affirmation. I see that that was to your be message. Sure. Okay. To be certain. Okay, thank you for doing your research, Joe. Yeah, no, I don't play. <laughs> uh, so what am I looking up here? Uh, Narsa. Because when they were calling me a narcissist, I had to look it up. And the service is bad here, so we'll wait a second. Here we go. A person who is overly self-involved and often vain and selfish. A person who suffers from narcissism, deriving erotic gratification from admiration of their own physical or mental attributes. Not erotic oh, gratification. I've never, wow, I've never heard that. And that's why it's important to look things up. Yeah. I think today a lot of these words are like water cooler words. So yeah. even what they really mean, we're changing the definition of what it means or we're adding nuance to what that is, like clout. It's like, oh, clout, clout, clout. Well, that, that means something. And I mean, I guess y'all are adding some shit to it, but these words mean things. Words mean things. I'm a rapper. That's important. Mm -hmm. Well, used to be. I thought it was a like, rapper. I was like, used hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Used to be. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Former. Used to be. Former. Former. Tired. Yes. <laughs> um, so, no, I'm not a narcissist. Okay, not a narcissist. No. But I do want to get to know you a little better because. Oh, give it to me. I, I, I don't really know you at all. I'm an open book. What would you like to know? Um, we're going to play a little game that we like to play on our show called Trigger. Um, I don't have any of those. Hmm? I don't have any triggers. You don't have any triggers? Okay. None at all. Well, then this is going to be great for you. Let's we're just We're going to ask you some, some words, and whatever comes to mind first, just tell us. Okay. I'm in. Okay, you ready? You going to do it? Who came up with most of these words? It's a combined effort. Y'all are so team friendly. Fuck out of here. We are a team. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. I did like 80%. There we, <laughs> we go. There we I go. There we go. I did like 80%. <laughs> she she did. did the extra 20. All right. <laughs> We're a fucking she team. She added the razzle dazzle. We're a team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready? Yes. Love. Free love. Marriage. That's your answer? Okay. <laughs> okay. So steady nod. <laughs> marriage is, yo, marriage today, but that's back to just knowing what things mean today. Marriage, what my grandparents taught me, what my parents tried to instill in me. I don't know if that's what exists out there today, but that could be jaded Joe speaking because I didn't meet the person to make me feel that way yet. Mm -hmm. I would like to get married. I've seen a lot of horror stories with divorces and just business business if we could just take the business away and make marriage back to just the union of love then awesome mm, okay interesting um democrat what about him nothing honestly just your first just your first thing that comes to mind when you think of this this place is just set up with all of these different groups to make us fight yeah i agree that's what i think i agree um uh, monogamy okay i feel you are you are you monogamous? I mean, I could be, but we can't watch some bitches. 
Amen. I mean, I agree. <laughs> right? What does your monogamous look like? True. It looks different for everyone. Yeah, mine does too. Um, fatherhood. Love it. Love it. It's everything. Single mom. Why are you left him? I'm not laughing. <laughs> why you nervous? No, no. I said why you left him. Oh, why you oh, left why him? <laughs> why you left that nigga? Why you ain't, why you ain't played this out in your head? <laughs> there are, there's a list. Um, Rory. My man. Mall. Okay. Favorite cocktail. Oh, you don't drink. Oh uh, yeah. Favorite position. All of them. Any hard nose. The one that lands with dick in a hole. That's your favorite position. There's they no are, bad they positions. Are all nice. Missionary is my favorite position. There's no bad positions. There's no favorite position. There's no go-to. I mean, it's a bad. I mean, it's a bad position if, if if the rhythm is off or if the chemistry is off or if you fucking somebody you have no business fucking. Mm-hmm. Then it could be a lot of bad positions. True. Um, what are your hard no's? I got so many no's. In what area? Business, personal, relationship, Listen. boundaries. What? Mm-hmm. What are we looking for? Okay, I got ma- I, my favorite word is no. Okay, let's do let's do business and relationships. Okay, business. I'm not doing it if it don't fulfill me. If it don't satisfy me, if it don't make me happy or whole, I'm not doing it. A dollar amount is not going to get me out to bed today. Mm. That's a lot of no's come, come from that. Okay. Uh, and you said personal. <clears throat> yeah, I can't take care of adults, man. Can't take care of adults? I can't. That's I can't. fair. My, my, my kids are becoming... I got kids. I can't do it anymore. What about pet peeve? Mm, in terms of what? Business, personal. Life in general? Uh, pet stroke. peeve. People that have no, and this is going to sound horrible because I was tardy today, but <laughs> people that are tardy. <laughs> people that totally disregard other people's time. Mm. Like even today, like it was some interview shit that got kind of jumbled up, but when you play with my time, it's like the biggest disrespect in the world. Mm. Uh, celebrity crush. No. Mm-hmm. Last time you masturbated. Every what? What time is it? This Did morning. You, okay. Well, no, maybe last night. Okay. Last time. Sometime you, recent. <laughs> last time you had sex. Uh, two weeks ago. What is this favorite porn position? Oh, porn category. Oh, favorite porn category. Oh, I just typed the women name, women's names. Oh, who's your favorite porn star? What mood am I in? Do I want to see titties? Do I want to see ass? Do I want to see a chick handle three dudes? Do I want to see like? There's no. There's if none. I want to see that, then I'll probably type in a. Um, oh, what's my baby's name? The white girl, Liz Ann. Liz Ann. Liz Ann. I need to look Liz, at Liz Ann. Uh, Liz Ann. I, Lizanne, I think girl. her name. I was gonna say, do you white? Do you, do you date white women? Do I? I haven't. Mm. But you like Liz Ann. <laughs> I like the way that she handles the men. It's a control thing. Vanessa Blue, who's black, does the same thing. Does Liz Ann fuck? And I'm naming. And I'm naming. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. She fucks them all. Okay. And I'm naming throwback when they're like, oh, this thing is old. But yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about that, how a porn is a porn. It's a porn. A porn is it that's, right? That's you what can, I said. If you're problem. a porn star, we you were talking about Justin Slayer the other day. And, and these young guys were like, oh, yeah, we know Justin Slayer. And I was like, yeah, because a porn is a porn is a porn. I try not to watch porn too much because uh, I want to do it. Which you're going to want to like. like do I want to. Watching a porn will just make me want to act out sexual. some visual, some sexual fantasy. Like, why do I have to look at this if I can create this? Hmm. So, well, some people watch porn and it's not necessarily something that they want to act out. It's not necessarily like something they want to experience. It just turns them on for the time. Nah. No. I mean, yeah. <laughs> would you? Yes, would you? but. I mean, I've watched. If that turns you on, like, then I doing it might turn you on. But sometimes, like yeah, I like. I watch. I was gonna say that I watch I really gangbang, but I don't think I want to be personally gangbang. Wait, wait, wait! You just twisted what I said. If you watch gangbang, and you could get a live gangbang to happen in front of you that you weren't participating in, then you would enjoy it the same. No, there are some points that I don't even know if I want. I I don't even want to know if I want to watch it live. Oh, it's okay. See, I'm different. <laughs> I, I'm a, I have fantasies that strictly live on the internet, like I'm like like, a, a, like, your like a male male. F- okay, you can't even say that when you go to play parties because you have no idea what fantasy will come to life right 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 in front of you. That's true. Well, I mean, like I don't your know daddy, your daddy fantasy. No, I want to role play my daddy my daddy fantasy. Wait, I do want to role wait, play. What's that? that? Tell me. I have a. <laughs> 
this is not popular. <laughs> uh, like, I have a fantasy of being dominated by, like, a, I like to watch, like, the daddy porns or, like, the uncle porn or, like, the sleep and then get taken advantage of porn. So, you know, basically you're saying you don't want to fuck your uncle or your dad. I don't want to fuck my <laughs> uncle or my dad, but I would like to be in a position to play, to role play those type of things out. But that's because, like, I'm a sub and I like to, like, be a brat and I kind of like to be dominated in that space. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Um, so that is she something. like an older brat tamer type. Yeah. Of Got it. Um, but I, okay, let me just shut the fuck up. <laughs> let me stop telling my business. Everybody okay. knows this shit already. I know. That's what we're here for. <laughs> right. I didn't know any of this, but. Yeah. Now you know. Now, now you know. know, my, <laughs> you know I Jeff, like my, it though, but I like it. I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you for accepting me. How is our stenographer doing? Are you well? Are you okay, camera? Oh, she's working, man. She's that means she's good. She's that means she's good. She's, she's, she's fine. fine. She's typing no, he still don't give a fuck. Look. <laughs> look, look, he wrote three, three things now. Thank God we called the camera. See? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. That's because he's competitive. We have two okay. people competing okay. for the best notes. <laughs> we have Orlando from Harvest Soft Podcast here taking notes and also camera. Shout out to camera. Camera, you're Oh, you guys you, got just podcasters everywhere. Camera, you have some competition happening, okay? Because Oh, my God. She said, I haven't heard anything this entire time, and you all can't hear me when I unmute, so I'm going to hang up now. Oh, no. It's because I muted her. You are so dumb. I'm dumb. Wow. Wow. And you didn't even smoke, so I don't know what the fuck. She was just on the phone. I'm, I'm, I'm calling her back to just... <laughs> wow. Yeah. We've been, I swear to God, we're professional podcasters. <laughs> We've been podcasting for I almost didn't smoke four specifically. Oh, fine. So I won't tell you what I thought I when you said, "Yeah, just come to the car wash." <laughs> uh, okay. Whoa! I was like, "He's not going to come." <laughs> Camera, like, oh, I'm sorry. What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Not the car wash. <laughs> it's it's a it's a car wash turn podcast studio. But look at this classy. Thank God, shit. homeboy at the car wash knew who I was when I was just looking lost out there. He's like, "Yo, where you trying to go, Joe?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. Um, uh, Spotify. What about him? This is trigger. What oh, we still on trigger? Say a word. Oh, we took a like long it. break. Uh, <laughs> big ups, big ups to Spotify. Nigga has ADD. Okay, uh, Charlemagne. And big ups to Charlemagne. Love him. Um, are you a dom or are you a sub? Uh, both. You're a switch then. Okay. That's what it's called. I'm just letting you know in case anyone else asks you. I'll never refer to myself that way, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you never it's know. Okay. You, you never know, Joe. Thank you might you find yourself at a play party with good moms, <laughs> and someone may ask you, and you may have to use the, the lingo, no, no, okay? Say, what the fuck are you talking to me for? <laughs> Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> like, I'm here to watch you be nasty. That's what I am. Don't learn about me. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> um... Uh, Biggest regrets. Oh, you guys are so much fun. I don't live with those. I don't have any regrets. Yellow. If you live with those, you die with those. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, love and hip hop. Love them. You say love them? Love them. Love them, uh, love them, love them. Do you have any habits? Any bad habits? What's a bad habit? Eating cookies at night? I don't know. <laughs> Why is that a bad habit? <laughs> Some people don't want to eat cookies. Diabetes? <laughs> Erica <laughs> hates when she does that. <laughs> Um, Eating cheese? Bad <laughs> habits. Bad habits. I don't care a lot. Mm. Are you a sociopath? What do you mean you don't care a lot? You don't care about people? Do you have empathy? I have empathy. Yeah. I'm okay. big on empathy. Okay. okay, well, that's the conclusion of our of our trigger words. We know so much more about you now. I, I feel, feel like, like you didn't learn anything about me. <laughs> I think he did a lot of moaning and nodding and... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I was trying to be so vulnerable with you guys. I'm gonna need you to be Joe, more. Open up. We need what you do y'all want to know? Vulnerable. I'm such an open I'm book. Open, Joe. Give it to me. Come on. We want to be closer. Let's get close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're at the play party. <laughs> Let me recreate the play party for you. Let me show you what happened. Let's slow dance. <laughs> I, I, we already tried to. Uh, I think off air. I don't think we heard this. I already tried to offer Joe a three way kiss so he could tell us who's the better kisser. And, he didn't decline, but we didn't do it, so. <laughs> so much for my fucking try. Yeah, I gotta wrap my head around the concept so you, of a so three-way kiss, up because <laughs> I just want everyone to know that he kind of declined shot. us. Yeah, I, I thought I'd try one more time, but fuck. Not, Have I you guys ever done that? 
Of course we have. I'm. Uh, it's me. A, a three way kiss. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean like with each other. Yeah. Yeah. She makes me do it all the time. <laughs> oh, that's like I don't oh, that's make you. She did it on New Year's. She made me do it with this guy that I was with who was totally not down for it, but <laughs> felt so pressured. <laughs> <laughs> I was on Molly. That is not fair. I'm a I'm a friendly bitch already. I'm just a friendly like floater. I like people. I like to hug and embrace people. And so on Molly, it's just like on twelve. And that nigga, I I was pressuring people because I felt like they needed to be broken open. Just like you, Joe. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My ears have, they have this thing that they do where they can just hear certain double standards and then I get fixated on it. What Boy, the- if a man were to say uh, anything that she just said, <laughs> it would be hell to pay. Wow, that's awesome for y'all. Well, you know what? I think that we've suffered long enough that we get to have those double standards. I really feel like you have you've you've privileged from some double standards too, and Joe. And to be honest, oh, we probably. didn't make the double standard. Probably. Y'all niggas made it, so we really? just, we're just thriving in it. Well, I'm know? not fighting that fight. You, just, may, you might be right. We're thriving in it. We're just going to use all the things. <laughs> we're going to try and make it people as as uncomfortable as, as possible without getting any weird. No one's gonna, triple kissing. <laughs> I'm just going to we're going to keep peer pressuring it, and no one's going to say shit about it. But if that happened to I guess a triple kiss could be dope if you do it right. Yeah, well, I know how to do it because I'm a professional, so (laughs) I was just putting it out there. If you want to do it with a professional, here I am. I don't really be kissing like that. Oh, do you not? Ki- are you one of those niggas? Oh that God, kiss I hate sex? that. Like, oh, you kept you. I'm assuming you've had. I'm assuming. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to assume, but have you had a lot of sex without kissing? Yeah. Gen- like maybe more sex without kissing? No, 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 no. Do you, I'm not that guy. Ill. What are you taking me for? I don't know, but even now, like recently, in the, in the last 365 days, have you had sex without kissing? No. So this is a thing of the past. You're- no, I'm not saying that either. I just have someone in my life who I want to kiss while I'm inside of it. Do you have a girlfriend? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Are you in a monogamous relationship? Uh, yeah. So you can't three-way kiss us. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is about. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so it's about her. Okay. It's not, you're just not saying no. Okay. Stupid. I, just, I needed to know for my so ego. So you can't three way kiss us. That's not, like, that's a part of, that's one of the rules, right? Don't kiss other bitches. <laughs> Even if it's on Maybe a podcast. Maybe not bitches you met 42 minutes ago. Yeah, to pod with. We're getting vulnerable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you seen that, wait, you see that little shoulder go up? I care about women's feelings, oh so I'm going to stop pressuring oh, your boyfriend. Woman empowerment's a myth. <laughs> what? <laughs> we don't care about these bitches. <laughs> we actually Fuck care about bitches. bitches. That's wait. really what women empowerment is. Wait, you think women empowerment is a myth? <laughs> yes, I don't, I don't think. Y'all tell me every day. Really? Oh, please. That's not true. M- mo- we are real women empowerment bitches. We don't. We're we're not. We're not haters. We love women. We want to empower them. I don't think it's a myth. I do think that women are learning how to empower other women, and so it's a it's a journey. You see the amount of women that voted for Trump. Trump? That's true. Like, do you really want to talk about this? So, something like, is what, funny for Trump too. Do. But what, what what race were those? R. Women? Kelly got convicted. They say his streams went up five hundred percent. You think that's meant? Yeah. Okay, let's move on then. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's all the men. It's all the patriarchy. You guys did it to yourself. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> okay, so you're a dad, right? I'm a dad. You have two sons. Oh, wait, mm-hmm. question. Oh, boy, dad. Wait, yeah, because I hate wait, that wait, bullshit, wait, too. We, go to we need to address that. Dad, I just have a question because this has been like a long, like I've been, I've been asking men this question and it's, and even on our last guest, he said he's a dad and he doesn't like to be called daddy in the bedroom. This person that I'm seeing doesn't like to be called daddy either. You are a dad. Does that bother you? That I'm a dad? No, no a that if someone calls bedroom. you daddy. No, I am daddy in the bedroom. Big daddy, no cane. Okay. okay. Told you, not all dads don't like it. It's I, know, I don't think they you do. Be able I to just separate. have to know his position on it because I feel like this has been coming up a lot lately. That don't, it, but it don't even be me. Like, I don't encourage the daddy. I don't try to solicit the daddy. But you don't I, not I, like I, it. You're not no, going to no, like bitch. Your dick's no, not going to No, but I mean, I understand. I'm in there doing daddy-like things. Like, they normally land on, oh, shit, daddy. That's daddy. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, got it. That's a lot. That's a whole mouthful. Daddy no cane? No, no, she's not saying that. I I say that. (laughs) Oh. She's she's just dead. He says it in his head when Uh, she says it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Cane might not be so bad. Okay, back to fatherhood. Sorry. (laughs) Okay. So you're a father, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You have two sons. You're a boy dad. Mm -hmm. And your oldest son is 20 years old. Babies, yep. And your youngest is four? Three. Three, almost four. Mm Mm-hmm. What have you learned between you have obviously a big gap in your um, 
and your, you know, your fatherhood, your children. What have you learned from the first time? Yeah, I've been fucking. If that's what you're trying to say. I know you've been fucking no, Joe. That's, not that's what, what it trying sounded to say, like. Joe. Yeah, no, big Joe. gap. Yep, I was fucking it. I'm fucking now. No, <laughs> but you were you were pulling out better in between. You were you, your pull out game has been strong for about 16 years. You know what? You know what? If I really want to think about it, here you'll learn about me. I don't. I think I was trying to have kids both times though. Yeah. Oh, so you you were you, yeah you did it intentionally. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, my pull out game is 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 nice. Obviously, you went sixteen good. years without. Yeah. No, I wanted a baby both up. times. Okay. What have you learned in in your fatherhood journey since the first time till the second time? What what has changed? What has changed from the first? To, well, the first the first I was gone for some real pivotal years. Like I was running the world. So that's the main difference. This time I get to see it all. I'm there for it all. First words, first steps, first piss. Oh, that's a dick. <laughs> like learning the early shit. So I'm there for all of that. That's great. Um, the trick with my oldest is just having to guard against myself now, really. Like I know, I know where I'm sick in the head. So I know where he be trying to get slick in the head. And I don't like it, but it's me. Mm. So you got to now try to teach against you. Right. It's interesting. It's a mirror. It is interesting as as they age to have to do that. That's beautiful. Does it make you want to undo those things that you are you? 100%. Well, hopefully, and that's the beautiful thing about evolution, hopefully by the time you get to that phase, you undid it already, mm. which is why you should be able to explain it to your child differently, like in areas you might have failed at when you were going through it. Mm. Do you, like... How do you, do you talk about sex with your, your kids? I have to. How I have to. Sex is everywhere. Is it's it an ongoing all conversation over. or just like one conversation? No, no, there's no such thing as one conversation. It's an ongoing conversation. Me and, my, me and my, I'm blessed. Let me start there. I'm blessed that my oldest son feels really comfortable speaking to me about, about conversations that might be taboo. Mm -hmm. Right? So when that exists, that don't never end. He might have been 14. I want to say 14 when the conversation just started with me looking through his socials with his DMs and mm. Twitter and so forth and the shit I was seeing in there said, oh, I was blown. I would have never guessed that. I would have never guessed that the young women were doing what they were doing in the DMs and that the kids were receiving shit. So you had to learn about that shit at such an early age as a kid. Did he show you that shit or you just yeah, like no, shit? Yeah, he showed me. <laughs> yeah, he showed me. Mm. And I'm and I'm asking questions because you got to learn from your kids too. It's like, yo, this is how your DMs operate on a normal. <laughs> it's like, dad, yeah. It was another time I don't want to put my kids' business out there. It was another time I learned that he was he was having sex in her house while her parents were not home. Mm. Oh no no no! no. Excuse He'd me. be hurt. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just saying. Excuse. Me. I see, mean, and now it? see back in our day, of course I've done that. Of course, that's what I'm saying. I mean, and that's what I mean about you should have you should be at a place where you've learned from that so you can give it to your kid. So did you book and a now, hotel room? Uh no, but I offered. Mm, okay. I offered. See, I'm that parent too now. If I if we have to do this in a safe, sound, and efficient way, then let's explore that. Don't just go in somebody's house with a famous dad so that when she's angry at you or emotional with you, she could say you did something. There's nobody in there to vouch for nothing. That could just be a mess if you think worst case scenario. Then with kids is they don't really think worst case scenario. No. Lawyers do. <laughs> right. Right. No, I think, oh God, I think about the, oh, I mean, I have a famous dad and he, I did not take into consideration anything when it came to oh, him at all. I'm lucky that Instagram was not around during that time or else I mean a lot of shit I mean, even teenage now, hormones. Nervous, I'm like oh god his fans are gonna uh, Your teenage share hormones. all of my crazy podcasting episodes but my dad is fully supportive of my career and anything that I want to do thankfully and also was fully supportive of me during like when I was a child he was the person I talked to about sex like, okay. my dad has fucked an immense amount of people like and it's what he told me he's like you'll never fuck as many people as I have <laughs> So you might as well just tell me if you're fucking. <clears throat> and this was because my mom assumed I was fucking and was totally terrified and low-key shaming me a little bit. And my, she was pass me on to my dad, like, oh, God, dad, like, you deal with this shit. Mm. And then he was like, you might as well just tell me. And I was like, yes, dad, I fuck. <laughs> and he was like, perfect, just don't get pregnant. Call me if you need help. 
And I was like, the wow. End. And that's all I really the needed end. to hear. Yeah. And I was so happy to hear that. You know what I mean? But also never considered how any of my actions could potentially affect him. him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so funny. My, my dad was at my house recently and I had like my birth control pills out and it, I had like a flashback because in high school I got some birth control because I was fucking and it was, I left it on my bed and my dad saw and it was shit hit the fucking fan in my house like what the fuck is this and in my head I'm like isn't it good isn't it a good thing <laughs> but I just remember like wow I'm so happy I'm 33 now because I don't have to be fucking scared that I niggas know I'm fucking <laughs> but also they would get me a hotel room on like special occasions like prom I'm like this is the most confusing fucking shit ever no one's talking to me about this I just got in trouble for the birth control but now you're getting me a hotel room <laughs> black families I don't know we need to have these conversations that's why I'm happy we're parenting different do you, talk to, do you talk to your son? Obviously, he's sexually act. Well, I don't know that, but probably he's yes. funny. Yes. Do you talk to him about, like, prioritizing the woman he's having sex with, her pleasure? He's got a, uh, prioritizing her pleasure? Yeah. Hell no. Why? No, it's not my job. <laughs> yeah, you're a man. That's mm -hmm. a part of having sex, right? Like, you, no. do you prioritize your, your partner's pleasure when you have sex with her? That's, you gotta stay, yes, but you gotta stay out of women's business. Like, That's not women's business. That ain't That's my place to teach him. It absolutely is. I don't think so. Why? I totally disagree with that. Why? You don't think like when you prioritize your woman's pleasure, your partner's pleasure, that you all both have you a don't better think that experience? that from a man actually would be more impactful than hearing a woman tell okay, a man. Okay, no, no, wait, 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 wait. See, I see what y'all are good at doing. Y'all are say some shit and then twist what you're saying. I know. What y'all said was, do you teach your son how to prioritize pleasuring her. I didn't say, I said, have you talked to him about prioritizing whoever he's having sex with her pleasure? Have you talked oh, well, about- why, yeah. did I, why did I hear teaching? And I was like, no, oh, no, no, I didn't not, say teach. I, I didn't say like, put your finger right him. here. Yeah, we're not here to like- How to do that. So. <laughs> like that's creepy and no, weird No, no, not like, first you oh, put one leg up. Oh, but do I speak up. to him about the importance yeah. of prioritizing her? Of course, yes. I'm a fucking gentleman. Are you fucking kidding okay, me? Okay, well, that's what I wanted to know. That's what sex is about. That's what the- you gotta, that has to happen. Okay. For sex to be successful, that has to happen. You have to prioritize her. And so you talk to him about this? Yeah, of course. And like to wash your hands and clean your nails and yes, stuff like that? Yes, manicures, pedicures, manscaping, cleanliness next to godliness, condoms, stay away from the dusty hose. What are dusty hose? What hose that are dusty. <laughs> what defines hose a dusty hose? with hose? dust on them. <laughs> hose with dust on them? Okay. There. Look, Have you experienced a few dusty hoes? Look you, how fast we got out of that can one. Can you spot that, a dusty hose? That, 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 that. <laughs> can you identify any can you dusty hoes? Can you dusty hoes in the crowd? <laughs> <laughs> How, okay, I have a question. <laughs> how are you, your dad, your single dad, or no, you're, you're a, a dad who's dating. Do you introduce your women to your children or you keep that separate until it's super serious? Yeah, I keep it separate. When do you know it's time? When you know. When you know. I haven't really gotten there. I haven't gotten there. I try to keep that real separate with my youngest. Uh, her and I have that understanding, I would think. We well, better, you have to talk about it. it. It's not, it, no, we I would think. We have talked about it. Okay, good. That's you, the thing of ours. But I mean, you never really know if someone is holding up their end of the bargain. Until so, they I mean, start talking. You're, you going on, you're going on your, your level of trust. So I trust that we have that, that we have that. My older son, <laughs> she's married. Mm. She wants me to meet the husband. You, you, so you haven't? I haven't. Why? Because I just haven't. They just got married recently. Oh, so do you plan on meeting that's him? A, that's, a new, that's a new thing. Well, she said it's important, so I, yeah, I'll meet him. Do you guys He's have a good? He's an important part in my in my son's life. I would assume. Right. They're in the house together, they married. This is a yeah. You want to meet him? Yeah. Have you and met? As a dad, you got to do that. Have you met any of her boyfriends before? Well, I knew her boyfriend before. Oh, like, okay. Same hood, so you know the guy. It's like yeah. You guys have a good relationship though. Today, yeah. Good. Real good, real good. Today, after all of my rebelliousness and immaturity and just. Ignorance, yeah. Are you in therapy? Always. Mm -hmm. Always in therapy. It's good. So My, a lot of people go to therapy when something's wrong. I just never stop therapy. Right. I just never stop it. It's come very on, healthy come on, yeah, let's talk. I had a great week. Let me tell you about it. Like it don't matter what I'm talking about about. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. How have you like journeyed into having a better co parenting situation? I need advice. 
Uh, through turmoil. <laughs> Huh? Through turmoil. Through, tum- through, 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 through turmoil. turmoil. Okay. It was tumultuous, <clears throat> really. Like, I know I can't sugarcoat it for you. Me and my, uh, me and my oldest son's mom, whatever it was to go through with that, we went through on the fly. Like, and I didn't have too much guidance. I went through uh, the in between boyfriend. That's just around now. It's like really dog. Why you're not talking? I've been through. Oh, we calling somebody else dad? Really, dog? Oh, God. Like I've been. Th- it's it's been it's been ugly. I I'm, I don't want to say this here, but I'll say it. A lot of times for dads, we get really excited and throw parties when our child's mom finds love. What? Throw parties. Throw parties. I don't think my baby daddy's throwing any parties. <clears throat> I hear you. I, I I I pray and hope that mine does. I really would throw and, parties. And, and and none of the mothers ever want to hear it. But if you just speak to dads, we be waiting. Why? Why? Why do you think? Because you think that we're gonna like <laughs> stop getting on your nerves. They're gonna so like what are they gonna take? They're gonna come in and take on some of your the role of the what make I don't I don't know I'm trying I'm just guessing here. It's not for me to explain. Are you assuming like the baby mamas still care about the baby daddies and and that's what it is? Is that Joe assuming that or is that? Are you like stereotyping all baby mamas that we are chasing the baby daddy still? Not all of everything is anything, so I would never do that. Sure. Okay, well, please explain. I need to know. I want concrete answers. A lot of relationships end without closure. Uh, a lot of relationships end without finality, right? Without things being resolved. Mm-hmm. A lot of times when two people try to move forward, the feelings between both parties convolute that. And whether it's the guy that starts dating first or the girl that starts dating first, dating helps to convolute things, right? When it's messy like that. True. You know what helps to fix it? Just like, just like, just like with anything else, the good, healthy, stable relationship that comes makes all surrounding areas better. So now she goes to meet somebody. Y'all might not be on the best of terms, but dude is filling her up. Dude is pouring into her. Dude is lifting her self-esteem. Dude is making her feel good. All of the things that she complained about or things that she might have had an issue with or things that she might not feel so great about with herself, a real nigga's gonna help with, right? Like, I've been on the opposite end of that. I've been with women, and I've had to constantly fight for their kid's dad. I had to be that person's voice. And because we don't get that. So often when you get that, shit just gets better. Shit gets better. And her focus becomes different. She gets she becomes centered. Now the focus is really the kid. It's not really none of the emotional shit that was around anything. You don't think that men also like men? Yes, I started with men and women. Okay, I started I think, with men and women. I think I don't disagree, I don't disagree in some capacity with that statement. However, I do think that if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing anyway, like regardless, like showing up for your kid, doing all the things that you know you've you've signed up for, that it doesn't matter whether she is in a relationship or not. If she, no, if, she if she has fully that's an illusion, departed what you're from that relationship. Nothing that you're saying is true right now. <laughs> it's the truth. No, no, it's not. It's the truth. If my, if, if in my situation, if I felt like my child's father was doing everything in his power to show up as an equal co-parent, I would not be on his head. I would not be on his ass. Okay, well, that's you. You, you're the anomaly. I, I'm just saying. But normally, <laughs> fuck, fuck you, Joe. What's happening no, in the I'm, world is not. We aren't seeing just pristine examples of this. We're seeing people. I mean, not just focus on women, but I'm gonna say women because I'm talking to women and we're here. We see women. Oh, do I'm gonna say this? Yeah, go ahead. Go and ahead. Say, you already, you're already here. You see women convolute relationships and not being able to compartmentalize between the parenthood and the kid. I will say men are definitely better at compartmentalizing. I feel like that's a... I don't disagree with that. I disagree because I think that is the general 
belief and I think it's it's based in stereotype that men are, are less emotional and women are just not are so emotional and that they can't control well, it compartmentalizing has nothing to do with being emotional I, 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 I don't feel it like, just is the ability to separate and assess I've both experienced a lot of men who don't have the ability to celebrate to separate and and also just yeah separate what's prioritize your child because you are so involved and you can't separate the relationship that we used to have and now oh, we no, no longer have that too. yeah niggas are very messy niggas and very well, emotional I think the ego is even some, a lot of times stronger in the in the man and being able to do that but I, I will say that men are really great at compartmentalizing just in general even think about sex like Men can really have sex. I think women also, I know there's women out here that can have sex without emotion. I'm, I've done it, and you've done it, and whoever's listening has probably done it. But I feel like men are much better at that. It's literally kind of like part of their DNA in ways that like compartmental, because they can have sex, and it's purely not even about connection. It's about arousal. Whereas women, we need a little bit more connected to that arousal you know mm. whereas men don't really need a sapiosexual moment <laughs> like they see a big ass and their dick is hard and their dick is telling their brain we must fuck whereas women just like oh my god like look at his physique oh, no not even you is... see a big ass the wind blows and now your dick is hard <laughs> and now it's That's like, a win. When, when your dick is functioning that way right? but i i don't agree that I, I i think it's a case by case situation i think that when a woman become, gets a partner or you know, a boyfriend, a husband, or whatever, there are things that are being fulfilled, right? However, if that baby daddy, if is, the baby daddy isn't did, showing if, up for the kid, it doesn't matter if you're getting dicked down by hubby, I'm still pissed. Like, nigga, what the fuck? You oh, didn't show up oh, for the well, soccer game. You way, said you were well, gonna well, show up. That's a new variable. That's a new variable. No, but, we, but nothing I say is ever talking about the, the people that are not showing up for their kid. Well, that's, I'm that's, not, but I'm that's not what speaking I'm saying. Well, that's I'm not saying a new nigga I'm, will take care of that. I'm never saying that. But you're saying I'm that, talking about the other stuff. You're talking about the man that is the great father is excited when his yeah. His, I'm always speaking from that perspective. Former, okay. You're doing I, what you're, you're doing the basic the bare the basic. I think that a lot of men think they're great fathers when they're not. No, you know. <laughs> I, just, I think that most men who are parents. Not all of them. I mean, I guess niggas know when they're fucking up. But I think that a lot of men have this skewed idea of what a good father is. And the mo the men that I've spoken to who I know, in my opinion, I'm like, you could do a lot more. They will argue with me and see, say that they that, are great dads. See, wait, time out. We found the trigger of mine. She's triggering me. Just that fast. Listen to that. So now, I've heard this a bunch. I've heard this a bunch. And this this is a problem. So let me address this. Dads be great, but that's on our dad scale. That's in dad land. Dads aren't primary parents. Dads, to get half the rights that y'all have, have to sign a paper when our child is born, and y'all have to agree to it. That normally never happens. So, yes, your responsibility in motherhood as the primary parent is greater than the dads. And we get a lot of moms that carry resentment. You think because, that wait, wait, let me finish. Okay, primary let me finish. I'm triggered. Let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. I'm still not finished. Okay. I'm still not Show. finished. And you get a lot of women that carry that resentment around and take it out on the guy. Because we didn't sign up to be the primary parent. We signed up to both of us being primary. Shouldn't have left. <laughs> Shouldn't have left. Shouldn't have left. What do you mean? Shouldn't have left. What do you mean? What does that mean? It's two words. I like should have left the relationship. Shouldn't have left. What if it went, you weren't happy in it? I don't think because. Oh we, well, then leave. But now we have, now we've segued so into so that, a new so conversation. That automatically gives the man like he doesn't have to be primary anymore because we left because of whatever situation caused us to leave. No, and let me not let me not confuse people out there. If you're not happy, you should leave. Always. Right. What I'm saying is that uh, often when women in my experience, are at that fork in the road, it's short-sighted. And that's a human thing. It's not a women thing. Where you're in your emotions and you can only see this tunnel and the end of it. But in the grand scheme of things, is that what you were supposed to do? Because that nigga double-tapped that picture of Shorty with the fat ass in Kentucky? So you think women Was you supposed to pick up your kid 
because all your family that don't live here and don't know this nigga and was never in love with him and pick up and go. Your entire support what? system, the mom, dad, family infrastructure, all of that is gone because he fucked her? Let me... So, I be wanting women to make sense of it. You know what y'all say to me? I wasn't happy. So women okay, leave baby. prematurely. You got right? it. So women leave hey, prematurely. Hey, you wasn't happy. Mwah. Let me say something. You got it, baby. As a woman, as a child you bearer, let me tell you something. The expectation. I'm pardoning too much now. I got to get out of here. Y'all going to get me in trouble. The expectation of the, the family unit um, is so deeply ingrained in women from the beginning of time you watch tv you see the media no every there is not a sink there are, i can't think of any woman who most women who are in a relationship get pregnant decide to say we're going to start a family together with intentions of being together in the in a family unit that you literally women w want that idea and that's been ingrained in us for so fucking long that it really generally takes a lot a lot for a woman to say, fuck this whole situation, because everything in media, everything since we're born is told that it looks like, this is what it looks like, and if it doesn't look like this, Yo, you failed. I love her. She agreed with me, then disagreed with me. I, but I'm saying, like, especially as a black woman, the, the stereotype of being a single black mom or baby mama is so negative that literally, like, I, you could, no, nigga could be fucking up, repeating, re, just repeating the same fuck ups. You could be miserable and you're like, please, God, Jesus, you will do anything. You will pray. If you, you may not even be a Christian, you might pray to the Buddhist God. Lord, just make this shit fucking work because it is, the, the image is, we're so attached to that family that I do not think that women generally prematurely leave. you giving I, me. 33 year old women ideology so let's start at the top of what you just said and I agree the concept the concept of what it should be and what our grandparents did and what we should do and the idea of hey so it takes a lot it used to take a lot right your grandma would know about the hidden family up the street and still be by granddaddy's side. It would take a lot. Today, I would argue that concept don't exist the same way at all. Today, that's why you see examples of niggas saying relationship goals to something with the lowest of bars. Why? Because you've seen two niggas, a girl and a guy with some jewelry on for seven months straight and they take cute pics together. <laughs> That's why it's relationship goals. Today, we're seeing more and more examples of women's tolerance being like this and getting the fuck out of here and feeling like, hey, we could even do it. And this is about to get me in the, we won't explore fucking the uh, emasculating men, but women are feeling like, hey, I can have this baby and do it without this nigga. I can have this baby and be, pri be privy to 18 years of that check and I can support me and I don't need I don't need no nigga. That's a different type of woman. No, no, I'm telling you what we're seeing today. So you spoke about the concept and the condi how we were conditioned coming up. I'm arguing that ain't the case no more. We are not conditioned that way. We're not speaking for dusty bitches. We're just speaking for mature. I think, I think that we are still conditioned to that. I think even the independent woman, even that woman that can makes more money than her her man or her boyfriend and is quick to say, fuck you, I can buy this or this and that amount. It's still this deep-seated line or, or, like, I don't even know how to describe it. This thing that's within women that we want that family structure. This is what we're told is success. No, that's that's true. I'm talking about executing. So the I'm, I'm talking about the bar in terms of tolerance and what you're willing to go through to maintain that. Well, I, but I think men have a much lower tolerance. Women are supposed to put up with so much shit. Would a man put up with the same shit? Would a, would a nigga put up with his woman constantly cheating on her, on him? Or even once. Like, I just did it had, once. While it they have a child? No, probably not. He's whoa, whoa, whoa. Probably. That's, not, that's not rooted in fact. You just landed there on your own. I'm, but I'm just saying. It's the presented shoe was with the, the other, option and maybe. You said you're triggered by double standards. I'm just yes. saying this is a double standard as well. But no, because you put in answers in the guy's brain, and, and that's another trigger of mine, because women do that to me. You say, how about if I did that to you? How would you like it? I might love it. I might love it. If, if you if you position this conversation in a way that we can. Of course I have. And I took her back. How many times? I would always take her back. Just the, so she took I, you back. You took I, her no, back no, no, we times. don't have to talk about the past. I'm I will just always I take her back okay. for cheating. I'm an adult. 
you fucking somebody is reason 900 I'm gonna leave you. Mm. That's, you're, 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 way, an, you're an anomaly. You're an anomaly. You're an anomaly. You're an anomaly. reasons most for me men, to leave you. Most men are not that mature. Most men, that's like the number one hell no. They can fuck hella bitches. Yeah, but you as fuck you age, one nigga and, and as God As you forbid. age, and this is why the young chicks are like an old niggas like this. As you age, you subscribe to different things. Yo, I don't even have it in me. Yo, if me and you together and you was cheating right now, I don't even have it in me to fix it. <laughs> I don't even have it in me to chase you around or argue with you to stop it. My decision becomes take a shit, get off the toilet. She wants to fuck. Do I still want to have something to do with her or not? The end. I'm not in the business. When you're young, you try to will your fucking, will your shit onto somebody else. I don't have time for that. Free love. Free love. People need to be themselves, be comfortable at all times. Make whatever decision you want to make without pressure from somebody else. It's man relationships now where two niggas are just there because it's convenient or they're scared to tell each other they don't want to leave. If you gave her the same money that he had, would she stay? Like, come on, stop. Okay. Well, I agree and disagree, but... <laughs> Give it to me. Come on, let's, let's do it. No, I'm just saying that, like, I do believe... I, I, I agree that, for me especially, I think I would never... I wouldn't leave my partner for cheating. There's a level, though. There's a level of res disrespect in the cheating, like having a baby that I wouldn't be I wouldn't be tolerant of. And I wasn't tolerant of, especially in my in my position, in my situation. So I, I stayed, can't have a break. I stayed with my partner throughout cheating until the nigga showed up with a baby. And then I said, okay, well this is where this is my hard no. It's <laughs> right around the line. I what, wait, what's the hard no? Having a baby having outside a of the baby relationship. Outside of my outside of our relationship. Okay. Is that a hard no for you? Or no? Like, is there a spectrum in no. your in your cheating or free in your free no. loveness? No, and I don't understand when I don't stop. I don't want to get me in trouble no more. Please no, no, go ahead. I, I want to know. You're not going to get in trouble. I, I never get when people when when women leave. I understand. Of that? I understand leaving because of that. But that happens, and in the event that it did happen, you would want a man that shows up, not a man that tries to hide the baby. Kill the baby, no. pressure the girl into doing some no, shit. No, but it's a level of responsibility that I think women, we don't, women, there's women who stay, which is, you know, that's their prerogative, and then there's women who leave, which is me. And there's a level of responsibility I don't want to have in that. I don't want to take care of this baby I didn't ask for. I don't want to be responsible for dealing with this woman who I didn't ask to deal with. You know, whether we had a relationship that was set up in the way that we're open and we, you know, and, and that's kind of like. See, I received this as an ego thing. It's not. I think there's a boundary. Think it's an ego thing? There's a boundary. That's how I, hear it. I think if you're in a relationship with someone and they choose to have sex with someone else and then are so irresponsible to not wear a condom and then go ahead and nut up inside that bitch, Don't you aren't fucking I'm thinking about see, me. See, and this is what I mean about the reasons that women will leave. All right, you got y'all got it. That's true. That's a, that's a boundary that you've crossed. Check, check this out. Cheating is gonna occur. It, Absolutely. 100%. Sometimes when cheating occurs, condom or no condom, things happen in course of the cheat. In the event that you had a man that that happened with, I mean, of course you could leave him, but I assume you would want him to step up to the plate and love and no, absolutely, absolutely. I'm not asking you to pressure anybody into having an abortion. No, that's you, not, you, that's not the you, argument. You lay there. in your bed. You made your bed. You lay in it. But do I have to participate? Oh well, in oh, it? Well, oh well. But y'all talking to somebody who says cheating is reason 900 that I will leave. So that's where my my position comes. Wait, let from. me ask you something. If we're in a relationship, y'all, y'all are saying fuck the baby. If you cheat on me. Then no, no, it's I the baby. Leave. The cheating is not the problem. Well, the it's baby might can. Well, see, then I don't understand it. The baby might can come from cheating. So if cheating is not the problem, then the cheating well, can be but forgiven. That's, but well, that's what I said. It's a going going so far as you have you not only you're cheating and obviously shit happens raw dogging happens, but you are not being conscious of your relationship and how that's going to make me feel if. You fuck up and then nut in somebody and then now you're in the position where a bitch wants to have a baby and you have to be there for that baby. You're putting me in a position where I might have to participate in I'm, that and I'm, I don't want I to. I mean, yeah, but it's and really... And I have to sacrifice uh, yeah. time and your energy is less because you're giving it to something that we mm. never as a unit decided we were doing together. The cheating thing for me... I what if he was targeted as a cheater? Then what do you do? Targeted? Well, you, if you were targeted as a cheater, you you have even more responsibility to make sure you're. And that still didn't tell me about what you would do. 
I w- it, it wouldn't matter Wait, to me. Yeah. It targeted, See, like, yeah, targeted, like, like, you're, like, a you're, woman was trying to trap him. That was that what you mean? I yeah. just want to be clear. Yeah. If a woman, is, if you know women, if you're in a, a position where women will try to target you because they think you have something that they want, like money or whatever the fuck status, you you should be even more careful in those situations. See, not realistic. I think it is realistic. If yeah. I'm an NBA player and I know there's a bunch of groupie bitches, I'm gonna be more more conscious of putting on a rubber. No, All you're it. not. You're speaking from the position of a woman mm. that has never been in that position. That is not the position of men. All I'm and saying. And who are you true. to say right. the position of men? I am. We I, see examples every day of the men you're talking about and who they're fucking. I, it right. ain't what you saying. All I have to say <laughs> is I am grateful that it happened. I am grateful that I experienced that because it has. It has vastly changed my perspective on the type of relationship that I want to have. Because in my go. relationship, cheating wouldn't exist. There we go. Because we are always going, there is no, I don't own you. And you if know? it did, you would leave. And I think in my relationship, we own, the, 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 the agreement we made was that we essentially own one another. When you make that agreement of like, you can't cheat on me or it's over on both sides. Like there's this level of ownership that you're basically agreeing to. Mm-hmm. And that is you're setting yourself up yeah, I, to be see, disappointed, see, which I is agree. exactly what I did. I, I'm, I take ownership for the fact that I think in my limited knowledge of what I could ask for in a relationship, I set myself up to be disappointed. And I was, and I made my choice and I'm fucking ecstatic by the choices that I've made because I wouldn't literally be here with good moms making bad choices. Like I wouldn't <laughs> have this platform if you made good right choices. now, <laughs> if I, if I, if I didn't have, if I hadn't made that choice, essentially, and now in my relationships, I don't require, that's why cheating isn't, an, it's not a non-negotiable for me. Like, I don't, I would never, I wouldn't leave my partner because there would be no cheating. I mean, essentially, there could be if I have set up boundaries mm-hmm. within my openness and mm-hmm. you cross those. But I think that what I'm saying is that I, I don't believe that cheating for me is a hard no, but I understand why women leave because there's a level of psychology and psyche that happens when those things happen. And, and like you get depressed and you go through depression and you start doubting yourself and you want, maybe you want to kill yourself and maybe that pastor isn't there to fucking call you. See, I wonder why y'all do that when niggas cheat. That's the part I'm confused about. What, like, well, like it's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> want to die? Yeah, like you're depressed <laughs> and start feeling like you're not really that you're not really her. Like, well, because it's all women they are paired against one another, and that's like the, the the we the first thing that I did was like you know look at her shit and be like, what the fuck, bitch, <laughs> you ain't me, you know. But I now I I when my friends do that, I always like challenge them to be like, this has nothing to do with you, actually. Like, why is or it that fuck, person? Why that's is what it I fuck be her? Saying. Yeah, you know, yeah. like your nigga made that choice too. You know, and I think that as women, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot that has to go on, and a lot of healing that has to happen in that space. But it's tricky. It's a tricky, slippery. For me, it's slope. about like giving grace, right? Like even in that moment, you have to be able to give grace. I I, I agree. So it's not for me to beat myself up about or feel like I'm less of a man or like my dick is small and my wallet is small. <laughs> Like you have big hands. This, <laughs> it's true. It's true. I've been noticing. But what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> They're kind of thick. I don't. Know. I don't remember what I was saying. Now. <laughs> he has very big thumbs, guys. <laughs> they are pretty hefty yeah. hands. Well, I, just, I, I I wanted to say one thing. There are m- much less men who are sticking with their woman who may have stepped out and maybe they fucked up and got pregnant. There are way less men who are like, I forgive you, baby, and I'm going to hold your hand through this pregnancy and stick by your side because I love you and you fucked up. I'm going to just ride it out. I'm going to hold your hand when you give labor to that nigga's baby. There is a very small population of I men know. who are willing I to know. do that. Where, for and, me, that would present a new, a new opportunity for me to fall deeper in love with my partner. For you. Like, wow, look at how you showing up for this baby that I know you was just cheating. I know you was just fucking. But now, look, you live with the, you live with the result of your actions now. I know I, I don't have to worry about how I feel about this because I think I know how you feel about this. And to watch how you maneuver this and handle this and, and consider me and make all of this and grace, ingratiate all this in your world... That would present a new opportunity for me to fall deeper in love with my partner, my partner to show me a, a, a new side of her, them that I never saw. 
And I'm just going to assume that's because you've done a lot of work and you've you've yes. matured. Yes. You have not yes. always. Yeah. I was, no, no, no. I wasn't always there. No, no, no. I wasn't always there. Forty one. Okay. So how how long do you feel like you've been evolved? This evolved less toxic masculinity man. Nah, nah, it's recent. Don't be fooled. So basically, had to <laughs> find a nigga it's over recent. forty. What was the work that you did? Like, how did you come to this work? Turmoil. Mm. A lot of turmoil. All my shit came from like learning and discovering in real time and like hurting myself, hurting people, uh, bad decisions, uh, self centeredness, uh, ego, pride, uh, rage, acting out sometimes. Like toxic, when you're in a toxic relationship and don't know that you're in one because you're so comfortable in and this. Toxic, like, yeah. like it's, a, it's a lot of that. So, Today, yeah, whatever I know, it come from, it come from, we was on some shit back then. We was bugging. And we don't want to live like that. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so proud of the work and, that and, you've and, done. And same to you both. I really hope that, I really hope that men listen to this episode. Because I do I too. Because I like it's important that the gems that you've dropped and the things that you've shared, I haven't agreed with all of them. Mm, but fine. I think that they're important. I think overall you're, you are, you're onto something and I hope that you can spread this message to the men's. Let them know, to Joe. The men. Let them know, Joe. To the men. Cheating is not a deal breaker. Tell them, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches like to fuck, too, and they also can fuck with no strings attached. It happens. <laughs> Forgive them. No, it does happen. I love when it happens. I love that for us. Why? Why? Because it's an opportunity to grow in your relationship? Wait. Fucking women with no strings attached? Oh, that you love when that happens. Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. I thought you said you love when whoa, whoa. your woman fucks with no strings attached. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Others. What do you others. look for in a woman? Like, what are the... I don't uh, look. There's no, tr- there's no specific traits that are like... I don't look. I want you to not, not, I want you to like, not be dusty. Okay. I want you to not fucking I still don't do know what dusty means, but... Yeah, one du- <laughs> <laughs> dusty, you know what dust means. <laughs> okay, okay. How does dust accumulate when, when something is sitting there for too long, right? Okay. You know what Dusty is. Maybe she hasn't been touched you in a see, long time. This is what I mean. You're trying to protect your little woman audience thing, but you know what a Dusty bitch look like. I'm and not. You do too. I'm trying to. Oh, I do want to know. I don't know what Dusty looks like. I've never seen that. Maybe bitch is Dusty. She doesn't know she's Dusty. There might be Dusty bitches listening that need to knock the dust off, okay? And I'm trying to help I'm trying to help you, Dusty bitches. I'm helping them. I need them to identify themselves first, and we need some points. No, please. They know what a Dusty before I do. I'll chew up. Throw some grease on you. Oh my God! Well, thank you for coming on. You guys were awesome. Joe. Thank you for having me. Oh wait, 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 wait! We need a hori. Oh right, right. I'm not letting Joe leave without a hori a because hori. you know we want to know. We know we nosy. We want to know all your business. Oh, that rhymes with Rory. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who's calling me. A hori. A, a hori. hori. It's a horror story time. A good hori. What's a good hori? Something who hasn't get, Who hasn't done this stuff? Freaky nasty. Scary, it's not, no, absurd. No, it's not freaking. Let's see. Absurd, like a crazy One scenario. One time I was out at, and this, I mean, I don't think it's so crazy, but I'll share it. I was out at our old favorite strip club in the Bronx, and I met a young lady who was beautiful. Uh, she happened to be into girls. That was great because I had a girl at the time, and I called my girl, and I said, "Hey, I, I'm here with a girl that's in the girls, and she's into you, and." I'm in her. <laughs> so we can be into each other. <laughs> About 25 minutes from the house, what do you think? And she said, cool, great, bring her over. So bring her over. I waited till the shift was over. That's the worst thing in the world, of course. <laughs> you can pay her a little extra to get oh, off early? No, 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 no <laughs> yeah, thirsty what time bitches. Yeah, time was the shift over, five? Yeah, no, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> you really wanted that ass, huh? We left, yeah, we left, light, we left late, and I waited for it. And then not that I was so into her, but my girl was excited. It sounded like a vibe. So I waited. And she got off. She got in the car, and we got back to the house. And my girl was asleep. <laughs> Did you wake her up? My girl was asleep. You didn't still fuck? <laughs> is that, is that, that's the end, right? No? <laughs> so I went over there. Okay, I was like, that is a horror story. I said, I said babe, you uh. I might have whispered that shit. <laughs> You up. <laughs> get up, girl. <laughs> Please. Every I got this girl over here. She didn't get up. So being hospitable, I went and, and took care of things, took care of the, the guest. So nice. So kind of you. So kind. But did, they, was your girl pissed when room. she woke up? Well, how would I know? What was there to be pissed about? 
She was okay with you taking care of the guest? The guest was gone by that point. Uh, did she ask in the morning what happened? Did you bring her? Nothing to talk about. Oh, well. Guest is gone. You slept late. <laughs> Taken care of. You no think need I'm to say, hey, it. while you were asleep, no, no, but guest knows your address. Wow, she, hopefully she's not a stalker. Yeah, you should have like caught me. that. <laughs> you should have been awake. <laughs> you snooze, you lose. So is that Hori? That's a good one. That was a good one. Thank you. I felt horish afterward. <laughs> I don't live that way anymore. Now you're done with those. Now I don't cheat in the same house. Yeah, I, I, that would bother me. I'm like, nigga. It's the best but way I get it. I did. If you fell asleep, you fell did, asleep. Did she need to be quiet or did you take her to like another place? No, she home? had to be quiet. Put my hand over her mouth while she was trying to make noise, but I kind of got her going. Oh, pussy like got that. Yeah, it kind of turns me on. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, disrespectful, but hot. Y'all pussy throbbing? A little bit. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> it was throbbing <laughs> more for the fire. You're so dumb in here, man. <laughs> I not go that far. Just relax. 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 That's yeah. not what she said. What's your sign again? Hmm? What's your sign? Sag. He's lying. I am. <laughs> well, who would be a Sag? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Honestly. A, I'm a Virgo. Got it. I, I, you don't know uh, your other signs. Your rising <laughs> and your moon, huh? Why? I just want to know. Uh, fuck. Did I forget right now? <sighs> you don't have Scorpio's the pattern Scorpio's one. Mm. Actually, I do. I do. <laughs> Why do I have to guess? <laughs> I know it. I'll just pull it up so you guys can judge know you. My, so, know so I can judge life. you. <laughs> you know, women yeah. want to know. Okay, the pattern. Does the pattern actually say? There it is. Say it. I feel like yeah, it does somewhere. Tells you. It does somewhere on there. Let's do you see. In, do you believe in the stars? Yes. How could you not? How could you not believe in the stars? I agree. All right. Let's see. Where do we go? You, me. This is me. Who the fuck is this? I follow people on there? <laughs> people are trying to match up with you, Joe, and see if they're compatible. Bond. How do I find it? Get me out of here. I don't think the pattern tells you. It does. Me. Somewhere. I feel like you have to pay for that. Co-star tells you. You have to remember what your time of birth is. I do. I know what time of birth. You do? Of course I do. I, I run my birth chart on everything that you can run it on. Okay, well then you should know what you're rising and your I do. Is. I just have bad memory. Okay. What time are you born, Joe? Oh, do I want to say it on air? Wow. No. So everyone can I'm run your chart. Giving, I'm not giving it to them. Whisper it to me. Can you tell, I tell my whole life on the internet, not that though, not what time I was born. Okay. I'm going to run a quick analysis. <laughs> okay, my name. <laughs> Don't worry, one sec. Um, Mind your business. I'm getting all in your business. I'm about to read you to Phil. Read me. Wait, what's your real name? Joseph. Joseph. Button. A Anthony. Okay, I don't need a Button. Button. You Junior, are you, you identify Big as a Daddy, he. no cane. <laughs> no cane. You identify as a he. I identify as Big Daddy. Okay. Not a he, no Big cane. Daddy. <laughs> I identify as the biggest of daddies. Wait, what was the year you were born again? Uh, eighty. Huh? Eighty, nineteen eighty. Okay, you're still an eighties baby. And that, what was that time again? Let me see. Hmm? Oh wait, I never mind. I remember what it was. Hmm? Oh my Are God! This, so guys? much pressure. <clears throat> so much going on here. So much is happening. We're about to find mm -hmm. out. And all right, it's Purvu Pogoni time. What time is it? Purvu Pogoni. What's Purvu Pogoni? Birth chart stuff. Birth chart. Yeah. Purvu Pogoni. Don't worry about it. Okay. Just go ahead. All right. Well, here we go. Joe is a Virgo. Oh my God! Oh. <laughs> we knew that part. His moon is Taurus. Hmm. There we go. That makes Taurus. sense. And, and the other one is bad. Yeah. His. It's bad. This is where it gets tricky here. What's tricky about it? It needs to be an astrologist. Uh, hold on, I'm looking for his ascendant. Look, to try to see who I'm compatible with. Mm. <laughs> I'm looking for his ascendant. Yeah, I know. No, because we respect women. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> We're women's empowerment. We would right. never try to see that. Yeah, I'm sure. Is there good soul food around here somewhere? It is, right? Somewhere, right? Okay, I'm not good at this. I, I want to go to it. I, I don't know. I want to eat food, it. too. Yeah, I'm starving. I can't find it. I don't know. Joe, we'll update it. You'll, I'll update you on yourself later. Thank you. <laughs> I'll update the charts. <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out with us no, and letting us. Thank you guys for inviting me. This was awesome. You'll never get rid of us now. We're going to I don't want stalk to. you. Okay, good. We're going we're gonna to be all in those stop group messages. Stop saying that. I don't okay. want don't to get rid of you guys. I, I, clearly, he's triggered. Jeez. And we're going to be your friend in the group chat. No, so. please. Please. <laughs> don't, and yeah. we're going to go to a strip club. And we're going to go to play parties. Yeah. Like and we're going to have whole, wholesome vanilla fun, too. Maybe we'll get our kids okay. together. 
<laughs> we'll do yeah. play dates. <laughs> yeah. play, play parties oh, sure. and play dates with Joe. I'm sure that's what we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Oh, all right, you guys. You know where to find us. It's Good Moms Bad Choices on all podcasting platforms. Follow us on Instagram at Good Moms underscore Bad Choices. Rate and review us because reviews matter, especially for Black people. And listen to the Joe Button podcast. And listen to the Joe Button yeah, podcast. Yeah. You probably already listened to Joe. I was going to tell him to like self promote, but you niggas know who we're the fuck. Yeah, I don't where to find us. Joe the yeah. Button. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.